If you guys want three sharp NFL bets, then you've come to the right place. For week three of the NFL season, I am keeping with the three theme, and I got three sharp NFL bets for you guys. One of them I have already locked in right here for a full unit. This next one, I am putting a half unit on. This one has been locked in. Next one, I got another half unit play. So between the two, excuse me, between the three bets, I got a total of two units being locked in today. So let's chat about it. First of all, so far, the NFL season has gone really well for me. So if you want to know the history of how NFL has gone for me so far in weeks one and two, been pretty profitable. Um, each week, I have a series of different types of things that I do. One of them that I do is uh, four sharp bets, one lock, one underdog, one player prop, one game prop. I do that for each week. Gone six and two on these so far. I put a unit on each one. So one unit across eight bets up almost 50% of that up $420. That's really cool. So those four sharp bets have gone well. If you subscribe to the podcast, Sweat the Bet, which I have up here, Sweat the Bet, any of your podcast platforms, you can get it um, hosted by me, aka Jedi Modi, also hosted by Andrew Kim, aka The Parlay Doc. Each week we give out three bets on our podcast. So between the six of those, I have gone five and one. The only game that I missed was the Eagles Vikings over 49 on Monday Night Football. I thought that one was a lock at the end of the first half. There was 31 total points scored in the first half. Zero points scored in the second half. That one was an L. Another situation in which we each put a unit on these months, but we're just tracking wins, losses, not getting too complicated here. So for week three of the NFL season, like I mentioned, there are three bets that I locked in that I think are really good. The first one that I locked in here, Houston Texans plus three against the Chicago Bears. So this one, um, well, I guess I should back up all of these bets that I locked in. I locked in using Odds Jam, using the positive expected value page to find all these sharp bets. Also, all of the sweat the bets, all of the four sharp bets, those are all those are all found using Odds Jam as well. So if you want to make money betting on sports, I recommend watching this video and then more importantly, getting signed up for Odds Jam. Free trial, you can get seven days. You can use the strategies that I talk about in this video in your seven day free trial and you'll probably make money. So this first one, and I'll detail how positive expected value betting works. Um, basically, the definition of positive EV betting, positive expected value EV, is when you're placing a bet that you know as the sports better has a better chance of occurring than the reflected odds of the sports book you are placing the bet against. Now, I know that was a mouthful, so let me dumb it down for you. Basically, it means, let's, let's use the example of flipping a coin. So I'm flipping a coin. The sports book is giving you 50-50, right? They think it's 50% heads. They think it's 50% tails. But I know, and I'm the only one that knows this, that the coin is actually weighted towards heads. So it's going to land on heads 55% of the time. So if I'm placing this bet with the sports book, I'm going to bet on heads every single time. I know that it's actually 55-45 as opposed to 50-50. That's exactly what positive expected value betting is. Odds Jam collects thousands and thousands of data points, sports books, markets, odds, whether the bet won or lost, that one's most important, and determined which of the bets based on all of the, or excuse me, which of the sports books based on all of this back testing is the sharpest sports book in terms of pricing odds. And then they determine which all of these sharp sports books are, and then create a weighted average to remove the VIG and find out the no VIG odds. So what you see here, these no big odds, a bunch of these plays, these are all calculated as a weighted average from all of these smart sports books in terms of pricing odds. So this is what we view as the quote unquote true line. This is how we know that the coin is weighted towards heads based on these no big odds. So the gap between the no big odds of minus 117 and the book that I bet this at, which was Circa at minus 105, that is your gap. That is your positive expected value. In this, in this case, equates to a positive EV percent of about 5.4%. And that's really good. So I bet 100 bucks on this one. As you can see, that basically means for this bet, my profit margin was $5.40. So it doesn't sound like a lot initially on one bet, but you have to keep in mind that A, that is just one bet, and B, these bets will be realized 
when they're placed. So in this case, Sunday, I think these are all Sunday. Yeah, all of these bets that I placed, my profit will be realized on Sunday. So it's not like investing in the housing market or investing in the stock market where it's slow, slow return. In this case, you're literally getting the return when the bet takes place. So you add up all of these bets together and you start to see how profitable it can be positive expected value betting. Um, and then just for this first one, this Houston Texans for handicapping reasons, I think the wrong team is favored here. I, I don't believe that the Bears should be favored. Uh, I think they're getting too much love from their week one victory against the 49ers that was played in an absolute slop fest. The Texans have played two teams that had playoff aspirations heading into the year in the Colts and the Broncos, and they have played them both tough. Granted, those teams might just stink. The Colts just got shut out by the Jags. The Broncos offense looks just completely confused and like they have no idea what they're doing. But the Bears will clearly be the worst team that the Texans have played so far. And they played those two teams tough. They covered the spread on both of them. The Bears just played a game against the Packers in which they were down pretty much the entire game. And Justin Fields threw the ball 11 times. In today's NFL, that is that is malarkey. That is complete lunacy, throwing the ball 11 times in a game in which you are losing. So I'm not sure what the Bears' plan is this year. They have a young quarterback, yet they're not letting him throw, and they're surrounding him with a bad offensive line and bad skill positions. Not a recipe for success. So give me the Texans here. Texans plus three. I absolutely love. Again, I put a full unit on this one. Texans plus three. I think that one's really good. The next one that I locked in is the Commanders plus seven against my Eagles. Now, this might seem like I am just hedging the heart because, as you can tell, I am an Eagles fan, but I actually do think that the Commanders will keep this one close. I think seven points is a little too rich for my blood. Carson Wentz revenge game against the Eagles is going to have an interesting narrative, but the Eagles, after coming off of that Monday night victory, are now playing on a short week in Washington, um, and I just don't think it's going to be a blowout, and the math supports that, right? So I locked it in at plus 107 on points bet. The odds jam line with the vigor moved prices this at minus 114. So again, another gap here, minus 114, no big line, plus, uh, plus excuse me, minus 107 points bet line equates to a profit margin of 3.15%. So for this one, I put a half unit on it. So my profit margin for this one is roughly $1.60, $1.65, something like that. So you add all these together, that 5.4% has now turned into eight and a half percent. Um, so I lock this one in. Another thing that's cool with uh, sports betting and with especially betting on spreads and totals is if you click into a, like I can do it for this one, I didn't show you for the bears. You can see where every market prices this play at. So we got the bears plus, or excuse me, we got the Texans plus three, minus 105, DraftKings, Bet Rivers, Pinnacle, which is the Ajian line, the sharpest line in the world, play up, all price this significantly more favorable than the circle line. If you open this up in, in, in the event page, it pulls up where every book is pricing this play. And as you can see, most books have this at two and a half or a two point spread. And getting this field goal when you're betting on an underdog is incredibly, incredibly important. The Bears win on a last second walk off field goal. My bet pushes at plus three, all of these other bets lose. So there are numbers that are really important to get under or get above, depending on whether you're betting on an underdog or a favorite. In this case, the favorite, or excuse me, the underdog, getting it at plus three is really important. And as you can see, I mean, most books do price it below this number. So that is a true outlier, betting on the Texans at plus three. So I forgot to mention that, but that's really important, betting on outliers. My last play is this over 50 and a half in Kansas City versus the Colts. Um, so to talk about my strategy for this one, you see a bunch of different totals here, over 51 and a half, over 52 and a half, over 52, over 51. And I've gotten a lot of questions about what do you do in that situation where there are a bunch of different spreads or totals that are positive expected value just at different numbers. And there are multiple different strategies. You could take every single one, you could ladder them, uh, basically saying if it's plus EV, you should take everyone because everyone is plus EV. Another uh, group of people will just take the one with the highest positive expected value. That's another good strategy. For me, I choose the one with the tightest market width, in this case at 14 cents. Um, so I put a half unit on this one. There's no right or wrong strategy. It just kind of depends on your comfort level and which one you like. But for me, I like choosing the tightest market width and going with that. And in this case, another positive EV play, a lower percent on this one, 0.92. It's not as high 
as the 3.3 or 3.15, not as high as the 5.41, but still positive expected value. Odds jam, no big line, prices this at plus 102. We got it at plus 104 on Bet Rivers. Again, I put a half unit on this one. So still positive expected value, just because you see plays that are a little bit lower doesn't mean that they should just completely be avoided. I do think that they're still valuable plays even at lower numbers here. Um, but that is going to be it. So in this case, those are my three sharp bets. We got the we got the Texans plus three against the Bears. We got the Commanders plus seven against the Eagles. And we got the Colts Chiefs over 50 and a half. So if you're tailing these at home, let me know. We'd love to hear it. Comment on the video. Let me know you're tailing. Other than that, I do appreciate you guys watching. Make sure to subscribe to the IGM YouTube channel to get all of these picks moving forward. Make sure to subscribe to Sweat the Bet to get all of these picks moving forward. And that's it. So enjoy week three of the NFL season and have a good one.